The budget was settled between the governor and the state legislature, and then uh, the attorney general pushed back and said that there was some of the money being swept from her control for opioid uh, treatment from an opioid settlement um, was being misused and was unconstitutional. She challenged it in court. There was a temporary stay, and then a judge made the decision that although, and basically the judge said from a policy standpoint, I agree with the attorney general, but the law is pretty clear, and it specifies that they have the right to do this. I think I've summed that up appropriately. To talk about this topic is the Attorney General, Chris Mays. Uh, Thanks again for coming on the show. Hey, Mike. You bet. Good to talk with you. Did I sum that up fairly in in how it was decided? Yeah, I think that's a pretty good summary of what happened. You know, we obviously still disagree with the judge and his uh, decision Um, We think that the consent decrees that are a part of the settlement agreement between the state of Arizona um, and all of the major uh, opioid manufacturers um, are pretty clear that the attorney general, whoever the AG is over the next 18 years, is supposed to put forward a spending plan and help direct this funding um, and spending uh, that didn't happen here, and I think it's kind of a tra- it's, it, it's it's an absolute travesty for for the state of Arizona that 115 million dollars is being swept into the state uh, general budget and into the Department of Corrections to backfill their budget um, instead of spending it throughout the state, which is what I wanted to do to help. Uh, prevent addiction, uh, help treat people who are already addicted to fentanyl, to fight our fentanyl crisis in Arizona, Mike. So uh, it's it's a sad day, I think, for Arizona, especially in rural Arizona, but um, that's where it stands right now. And I think the Department of Corrections had better be ready to prove Uh, to me and to everybody else that they actually are spending this money on opioid addiction uh, purposes. And and well, and and you are, and and the pushback would be that they are going to use that in there. But the question I have, I guess, for this is from a legal standpoint, from a lawyer standpoint, do you understand the judge's ruling? Because there's a difference between what is the right thing to do and what they are legally allowed to do. Do you still believe that under the law they should not be allowed to do this, or do you just think it was the wrong thing to do now? No, I think they should They should not be allowed to do this. In fact, I mean, the proof is in the pudding. Mark Burnovich, my predecessor, and I, for two straight years, did it under – uh, the the methodology that was spelled out in the consent decrees. Uh, and and so I don't understand w- w- why uh, all of a sudden, um, except for the fact that they were desperate to backfill their budget, um, that they that we have now veered into this new process. I mean, Mark Burnovich put forward expenditure plans. I think they were good expenditure plans. As you know, Mike, I don't I, I don't compliment my predecessor very much, but I think he number one structured a really good settlement with these opioid companies, and number two, he put forward expenditure plans that helped all of Arizona. I did as well last year, and then all of a sudden we have this budget uh, uh, deficit. Um, and by the way, Mike, you know, the legislature and the governor could have used a $1.4 billion rainy day fund to plug this gap, but instead they swept these opioid funds contrary to the consent decrees, which, by the way, were signed by six or seven different judges in Arizona. When you look at what's next, because I know one of the concerns you've put forward is that some of these opioid companies now may say you're violating or we as a state are violating the agreement by not using that money as it was specified to be used. Are you still fearful that that might happen? I I am. I think that's a danger. And that's why I'm going to be watching with an eagle eye um, to make sure that the Department of Corrections actually uses this money for approved purposes for opioid treatment um, and other approved purposes. And, you know, just look at what some other states have already done. You know, there are other states that at least one other state has passed a law prohibiting what this legislature and governor just did in sweeping the opioid funds. Um, You know, and so, you know, and that's because the settlement agreement, you, you could see some of these pharmaceutical companies coming into Arizona and trying to claw back their money. 
because they believe it's been misspent. I mean, you know, so obviously that would be a lawsuit against the governor. Um, she would have to explain that, and the legislature would have to explain that. But I am worried about it. Arizona Attorney General Chris Mays is joining us. Have you or did you have any discussion with the governor's office or with either of the House Speaker or the Senate President about this as it was progressing? Have you had any discussion before or after this decision? Yeah, both, Mike. I mean, we were um, we we had we had been having conversations with the governor and legislators for a year about the expenditure plan that I had put forward that would have uh, sent this money all throughout Arizona on treating uh, opioid addiction and, and other approved purposes. And then when they started in the 11th, the 11th hour of the legislative session, when, when they started talking about sweeping all of the money, by the way, my expenditure plan would have spent $10 million on the prison systems, not $115 million, you know, which is one third of our total state share. But when they started talking about this, I went down to the legislature and lobbied against it. We desperately lobbied the governor's office against it. We told them it was illegal. Um, we told the legislature it was illegal, but uh, they, they obviously didn't listen to us on that point. Did they give you any reasoning behind it? Because one of the things that I, I've i kind of really pushed is that you have a very progressive Democrat in the governor and Governor Hobbs, but two very conservative Republicans in the House Speaker and in the Senate president. And yet they agreed that this was the right thing to do from two completely different political perspectives. Did you get either of those perspectives from either group? Um, I think what really happened here, Mike, is that this was the idea of the Senate president and the governor went along with it. And so, you know, I think they were both desperate to, to get a budget done and neither of them, for whatever reason, was willing to dip into the rainy day fund or to go after what I, as you know, I think is an out of control voucher program. We've got, you know, we're now spending a billion dollars on vouchers, which nobody ever expected so they weren't willing to fight for uh, uh, using other sources of fund to to um, to balance the budget. Instead, to balance the budget, they illegally spent opioid funds, and I think that's just sad and unfortunate. And yeah, I, the the governor basically signed a Republican budget. When uh, and I want to before I let you go, if you don't mind, just a couple of very quick questions on other things that are happening in your office. One is the investigation into what is known as the fake electors case in Arizona. Is there any update you can give us on that investigation and what's happening in your office? Um, so, as, as you know, Mike, with the, all of the initial appearances have now occurred, and uh, there, there is a trial date that's been set for uh, October. Um, you know, we expect there to be a, a, a lot of motions filed that we also anticipate uh, – um, offering uh, plea deals. Um, I think that is uh, something that, that, that will be on the table. Um, and we'll see where we go, go from there. But we'll be ready for trial in October. I'm not sure that that will actually happen given the number of motions that are likely to be filed. And then lastly, can you give us any kind of an update on the investigation into the governor's office with what's known as the pay for play thing that the accusations that are out there that your office is investigating? Um, just that we are actively investigating. I have assigned investigators uh, to that case. Uh, we're, we're moving forward with it. And, uh, you know, uh, pursuant to the referral that we received from uh, Senator Shope, and we anticipate, uh, you know, doing that investigation. As you know, we have some of the best investigators and lawyers in the state of Arizona working on, on, on all of our cases. So we'll update folks when we have a result. And so is there any kind of a timeline on some of those updates or is it just wherever it leads you? Yeah, I think it's wherever it leads us. I, as you know, I'm hesitant and don't think it's a good idea to give sort of um, updates really, you know, I think that's not a, not a, a wise thing for a prosecutor to do. So you know, we're going to we're going to let the facts lead us, uh, you know, and and uh, provide people an update. And, and this will be a very professional um, uh, investigation. And uh, we're taking it very, very seriously. As always, I appreciate the updates on things. I know the audience has been very curious about all of this, and I appreciate the candor. And I look forward to talking to you again. Thanks, Mike. It's good to talk to you. All right. Great. That is the attorney general, Chris May, spending a few minutes 
um, and still very emphatic and very passionate about the opioid uh, settlement money. This is not going to go away. We'll be talking more in the future. Thanks for watching the Mike Broomhead Show. Catch up on Amazing Arizonans, a KTAR News podcast, and click the button in the middle to subscribe.